What's up guys? Greetings from Houston, Texas. Mike coming at you from AT Astro, Error of Truth, Aspect and Predictive Astrology. Today, I'm going to be teaching you little bastards how to read a solar return. Boom. And what a solar return is and what it does and how it works. Uh, so a solar return is a chart that you cast on the date of your birthday every single year. Uh, at the moment that the sun returns back to the position it was at on the day of your birth. Sometimes it's the day before, sometimes it's the day after, usually it's on the day of. But what it does is it gives you a forecast of how the year is going to go. Now, usually you take the solar return and you read it in context with, you know, what's going on in terms of your transits and progressions. But just for the sake of uh, simplicity, we're just going to be focusing on this one technique. So, we are going to be using Winston Churchill. And... I wanted to do his solar return chart for a specific year because most of what made his entire legacy, his entire career, uh, it all occurred within the space of one year, within his, the solar return year from 1939 to 1940. So, I mean, and this is a year that completely transformed his entire life. Now, he had some stuff going on as progressions and solar arcs and whatnot, but the solar return was pretty telling. In fact, I haven't even looked at it in a while. So I'm going to have to sort of go back through it and you'll see me undergoing the process of how I would normally interpret a solar return. They're really badass and they're really useful. Uh, so let's just, I guess, dive right in. So you, of course, you go to astro.com as the best place to, you know, do a solar return. You can use other softwares, of course, but you input the data. See, I got Winston Churchill up here. Chart type, solar return. Uh, you need to make sure the reference place is around or exactly uh, at where they were at at the moment the sun returned to its position so your location on the face of the earth at the uh set of your solar return is going to affect the chart as a whole especially where the ascendant falls i put his birthday his birthplace because it's relatively close to london and london was where he was at so it's not going to really affect it all that much if actually at all so let's dive right in all right so, this is a solar return. It's completely different than your natal chart, with the one exception being the sun will be at the exact same degree and sign that it's always in on your natal chart. Uh, so what's the first thing you notice? Well, Jesus Christ, we've got Pluto on the ascendant. We've got uh, this crazy thing going on in the eighth house. We've got a lot of stuff in the fifth house. And it's good to go over that. Oh yeah, we've got this really cool grand train. But before you even start to break this down, you want to look at where the Ascendant falls. The Ascendant is at three degrees Leo. You go over to their natal chart, and I have his natal chart saved over here. This is Winston Churchill's natal chart. And you find out where that Ascendant falls, what house it falls into. So three degrees Leo would be right here. That falls into his 10th house. And um, folks, whenever you see that the Ascendant falls in one of your angular houses, the first, fourth, seventh, or tenth house, that's usually a particularly important year because those are the angular houses. They uh, are parts of the personality and the natal chart that interfere with the outside world directly, either through your appearance, your family, your relationships, or your career. And uh, with it in his tenth house, that means that this house is activated. That means his career is activated, which makes total sense for this year. See, a little bit of backstory uh, for those who don't know. In 1940, which is when most of the solar return uh, transpires, uh, Hitler decided he would invade France. Well, of course, like they had already been at war with the Germans, uh, but you know nothing had really happened. And then all of a sudden, uh, Hitler busted through the Ardennes, and he uh, caused France to capitulate, and then left Britain alone on the continent fighting off the Germans. So... This was a period of time where the British were forced to stand up solely against what seemed like an unstoppable force, and many elements within the English government at the time, the British government at the time, were fully prepared to enter into a negotiated peace settlement with the Germans. And the thing is, is if that had happened, and or, or the Germans had actually crossed the English Channel and invaded England, more than likely, uh, well, the British government would be completely disbanded, uh, and a lot of the people running the uh, British government would probably be, you know, taken prisoner by the Germans, possibly even killed. So, 
Winston Churchill stood up and he was given the role of prime minister. He was actually, he didn't really choose the position. It was kind of just thrust upon him. And he took control of the British government and actually successfully prevented the Germans from invading England at the Battle of Britain, which was an air war. And he successfully led his people. He rejuvenated a, a sense of national pride and resolve and did just something absolutely terribly amazing. He saved his country. He saved his country from what appeared to be imminent invasion. So, so right now, see the ascendant at three degrees Leo activates the tenth house in the natal chart, um, and we've also got Pluto sitting right on top of the ascendant. So, Pluto being right on top of the ascendant would indicate a huge transformation of the individual and how they are perceived, not just by the public as a tenth house, but how they are perceived in you know why. I mean, more than likely, this is a very high stress situation. It may have probably aged him quite a bit, but it definitely changed who he was as an individual. When you see Pluto sitting on any of these angles, you're going to notice sweeping changes in uh, those areas of life, even if they're just in the houses and not necessarily conjunct the angle. Like Pluto in the seventh house can uh, a lot of times symbolize a divorce or it can symbolize somebody coming into your life that completely changes your perception of uh, your view of relationships and how you relate to people. So Pluto being right on top of the ascendant shows that this is very, very, very important. Now, we've got the ruler of the 10th house. Now, you want to use house rulers in solar returns. They're important. Uh, and, and the reason they're important is because every single area of life, as defined by the 12 houses, are always in play at any given point in time in your life. And so you want to look at the house rulers of each of those houses and what aspects are being made to them to show how you're doing in that respective area of life during the course of that year. So we've got the ruler of the 10th house and the 8th house. And then uh, subversively, or reverse, we've got the ruler of the 8th house and the 10th house. So the 8th house is the career, or yeah, the 10th house is the career, the 8th house is crisis. So the matters related to the 8th house serve the purpose of the 10th house, and matters of the 10th house serve the purpose of the 8th house. The 8th house also has to do with the transformation. That alone, with, uh, so I mean, Saturn's ruling the 8th house, it's sitting in the 10th house. Uh, so matters of the career led to a great transformation as an individual for this man. And the ruler of the eighth sitting in the tenth, or the rule, yeah, the ruler of the eighth or the ruler of the tenth sitting in the eighth, God, I'm having word vomit. This is horrible. Um, shows that crisis, you know, he, trust me, their country was completely in crisis, served the, you know, needs of the tenth house in this particular circumstance. Now, Granted, the uh, rulers of these respective houses are relatively challenged, challenged, so it shows difficulty in those areas, but nothing in astrology is absolutely fatalistic. So these energies are present. There's difficulty implied by these particular aspects, like what Mars is doing and what Saturn is doing, but anybody can overcome them if they make the right choices. So we have the fifth house being very highly activated. In fact, the, the ruler of the chart is in the fifth house. And he very much used his personality, his expression, his talks over the radio. Uh, and also Neptune in the third kind of brings about that, you know, little thing with the radio, there's a little radio show that, <coughs> that um, helped galvanize the public uh, in support of him and what his aims were to do in terms of protecting the country. He very much was uh, able to express himself in his personality in a way that uh, was very receptive uh, or that the British people were very receptive to. So we can definitely see that at play. And uh, it obviously worked out very well for him because this transformation uh, with Pluto at the Ascendant, the uh, Mercury and Sun in the fifth, and then Jupiter in the ninth, they're all forming a grand train, which is generally a very positive aspect in a solar return. It shows that even if there is crisis uh, implied by the activities of that year, you will have quite a few strengths to lie back on to meet the challenges. Grand trains are amazing in a solar return. I see them actually quite often. And uh, traditionally, the Ascendant activating the 10th house in a solar return is supposed to be a pretty good year. Uh, the Ascendant activating the 12th house or activating the 6th house in the natal chart that's ten, tends to not be that great. Um, not like a super crazy traumatic year, but definitely one that's not 
easy to deal with. Uh, the Ascendant activating the 8th house of the Solar Return is pretty intense. That's a crisis here for damn sure. Whether or not it works out well for you depends on how you handle the energies. The Ascendant activating the 2nd house, like I had a couple years ago, that's usually pretty good. Uh, if the ruler of the chart and the Solar Return is aspected well. I actually I received a lot of money that year. I got a, a settlement from an accident I was in. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Like I was just drowning in cash that year. It was crazy. I spent it all, but, you know, it's still good. Uh, so yeah, you're, there's, you're going to have to take a lot of things into uh, consideration. I think a really important one to notice here is, uh, the moon in the 12th house. Now granted it's, have, it's, you know, relatively well aspected with the exception of the square to Saturn, but it shows that like he definitely felt throughout the course of this year, like he was alone. Now you have to understand that at the time parliament wasn't necessarily behind him. Uh, in doing what he wanted, to, what he needed to be done to save the country. There were many people that wanted him to, you know, negotiate with the Germans and wanted to negotiate a peace settlement, and he knew this to be death. So you can tell that there was definitely a feeling of isolation in terms of uh, how he was having to handle himself this year. Having the moon in the 12th house is kind of hard to deal with in a solar return, but it's not all that bad. There's just a lot of periods of reflection that are implied by this particular placement. Also, what's interesting is Neptune in the third house. Um, that I think that's really good for any type of social interaction, especially with the public figure, because he was using methods of communication to interact with the pu public as a whole. And uh, his radio talks were famous, famous for years. His speeches were very much idealized. You know, we'll fight on the beaches, we'll fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. I mean, those have rung through the echoes of time. So Neptune um, being po deposited in the third house of communication really shows that this individual was able to speak in a way that was captivating, if not realistic, but captivating nonetheless. So, you know, I, I just thought I'd go ahead and do a little brief overview of how a solar return works. I mean, granted, you can start to break things down bit by bit. You can even add asteroids if you want. And uh, a good tactic to use is to uh, check out the uh, transits that are going on first and the progressions to find out what's going on with those and then using the solar return to cap it all off to tie everything together at the end. That's the method that I usually do in my predictive analysis. Um, I'm very good at predictive astrology. I offer consultations. Please feel free to get a hold of me. I would be more than happy to help do some forecasting for you or just help you read some through, through some of your charts or teach you how to do predictive astrology. Just uh, contact me on my email or via Facebook. I'll have everything posted down below. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my podcast, Outrage Astrology, with the wonderful Brittany Robinson. It's available on Podbean, iTunes, as well as Google Play Music. We release new content every week. And uh, until next time, guys, hopefully this was helpful.